Hello, Mrs H here. This is part two of three walkthrough for AQA Paper 1 2019. Question three. This question is about photosynthesis. Complete the word equation for photosynthesis. So we've got carbon dioxide plus water gives glucose and oxygen. A student investigated photosynthesis using pondweed. Yeah, this is our required practical six. Anyway, figure three shows the apparatus the student used. This is the method used. Set up the apparatus as shown in figure three. Switch on the lamp. After 20 minutes, record the volume of oxygen collected in the measuring cylinder and repeat steps one to three using bulbs of different power output. So if we look up here at the bulb, then changing the bulb to a different power output is actually our independent variable. So we've got that sorted before we move on to the questions. What was the independent variable in this investigation? Well, it's the power output of the bulb. We know that because it's the variable we are changing to see if that will have any effect on the volume of oxygen produced by the pondweed. Suggest two ways the method could be improved so the results would be more valid. Now, when you see the word valid, you need to think about what your control variables are that you need to repeat in the investigation so you can identify anomalies and discard them from when you calculate a mean. And you also need to make sure there's a range of at least five in your independent variable. So at least five power outputs of bulb and if you turn the page, you can see that actually they have investigated five different power outputs of bulbs. So we're not going to mention that in our question. So what we are going to put is repeat the experiment at each power output and discard any anomalies when calculating a mean. And then if we are changing the power output, we need to make sure other variables are kept the same so that we know it's only the change in power output that's having an effect. So you could write, keep the water in the beaker at the same temperature. Or there are other things you could write as well, but remember you're only writing two, but other suggestions could be control the concentration of carbon dioxide or keep the distance of the bulb from the pondweed the same or keep the mass of the pondweed the same, etc. Remember, don't use the word amount. So if you feel yourself saying amount of pondweed, think no, it's mass, mass of pondweed, because you won't get a mark if you write the word amount. Table three shows the students' results. So we've got power output of bulb in watts, we've got volume of oxygen collected in 20 minutes in centimeters cubed, and the rate that's been converted into centimeters cubed per hour. Calculate value X in table three. So at 150 power output, there's 1.1 centimeters cubed of oxygen collected in 20 minutes. So as the rate is in centimeters per hour, we need to times our 20 minutes by three to make that up to an hour. So basically we're doing 1.1 centimeters cubed times three to make that up to a centimeter cubed in per hour. So that is gonna be 3.3 centimeters cubed per hour. And you can always check that the other rows match the same pattern if you ever questioning your methods. Right, I'm gonna write the values from the table here next to the graph to make it easier so you can see what I'm doing. You don't have to do this, obviously. Then we need to label the x-axis. So that's just gonna be your independent variable always goes on the x-axis. So that is whatever is in the left-hand side of the column. So that is power output in bulb in watts. Use a suitable scale. For the scale, they have put 60 as the first number to try and trick you. Your axis needs to go up in even steps. So you're gonna to have to do 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, and 250. So they've deliberately put the 60 in there to see if you can work out that you're not allowed to put that on the scale. You've gotta go up in even numbers. And draw a line of best fit. Some students, think that means a straight line of best fit, but it's 
whatever your plotted points look like they should be. So does it look like you can do a straight line or does it look like you can do a curve? So a line of best fit can be a straight line or a curve. When you plot your points, make sure you're doing it with a neat cross and these results definitely look like a curve. So we are going to do a line of best fit, which is a curve of best fit. Make sure you do your graphs in pencil so that if you do make a mistake, you can just rub it out. And if it makes you feel happier because it's an exam paper, once you've done it in pencil, you can always go over it in pen. Determine the expected rate of photosynthesis with a bulb of power output 75 watts. Use figure four. So find 75 watts on the X axis, draw a dashed line up to your curve, and then take the dashed line across to the Y axis, and then you read off the value, which on my graph is 1.8 centimeters cubed per hour. Which graph shows the effect of temperature on the rate of photosynthesis? Tick one box. Well, we expect the rate to increase as temperature increases, but because this is photosynthesis, this reaction is controlled by enzymes. So if the temperature increases too much, then the enzymes controlling photosynthesis will become denatured and the rate will decrease. So we're looking for an increase in rate and then a decrease. So this is the correct one. Water moves from a plant to the atmosphere through the leaves. How is the volume of water lost from the leaves controlled? Well, remember the guard cells on the underside of the leaves? They actually control the opening and the closing of the stomata. So that's what we're gonna to need to write down by the guard cells opening and closing the stomata. Describe the transport of water through a plant from the roots to the atmosphere, three marks, Let's make three really clear points then. Water is transported in xylem. Water evaporates from the leaves through the stomata. A student investigated the volume of water lost from two plants of different species. Both plants were kept together. Figure five shows the student's results. So we've got volume of water lost in centimetre cubed on the Y and we've got time in hours. We can see from here that plant A loses more water than B. Suggest one reason for the difference in the rate of water loss from the two plants in the first two and a half hours. Well, since they're both kept in the same area, maybe plant A has more leaves, so we could write that one down. Remember, you've only got to write one thing, but you could also have written plant A could have more stomata, maybe it's got bigger leaves, a greater surface area of leaves, something like that. Both plants were moved to different places at two and a half hours. So calculate the rate of water loss per hour in plant B from two and a half hours to three hours. So we're going to have to use our graph and we need to give the answer to two significant figures. So mark out two and a half to three hours for plant B. At two and a half hours, plant B loses two centimeters cubed of water and at three hours, it loses 7.2 centimeters cubed. So over those 30 minutes, there has been a 5.2 centimetre cubed total loss of water. So 7.2 minus 2. If there is a 5.2 centimetre cubed loss in 30 minutes, we need to convert that to per hour. So we're going to need to times that by 2. So 5.2 times 2 gives us 10.4. But the question asks for the answer to be to two significant figures. So the answer is 10. Suggest two reasons why the rate of water loss in both plants changed after two and a half hours. Well, that could be maybe the surrounding temperature may have increased or maybe the light intensity could have been higher. 
What you need to be really careful of here is not saying something like the surrounding temperature might have changed or the light intensity might have changed. You need to show that you've understood more water has been lost so that temperature must have increased, light intensity must have increased. Changed is a very naughty word so try not to use it. Question five, figure six shows the internal structure of the human heart. One of the heart valves is labeled. Sometimes a valve in the heart can start to leak. Explain why a person with a leaking heart valve has difficulty exercising. So before we try and answer the question, we've got to remind ourselves about what's going on here. This is the right side of the heart which pumps deoxygenated blood to the lungs. What should happen is that the blood that has been around the whole body should come here to the right atrium and then the atrium will contract and push the blood into the right ventricle. The ventricle contracts, the blood gets pumped to the lungs to fill up with oxygen, but because the valve is leaky, when the ventricle contracts, some of the blood goes back into the atrium, meaning less blood goes to the lungs. So the blood, when it returns to the left side of the heart, will have less oxygen in it. And that will mean when the left ventricle pumps, less oxygen will be pumped to the exercising muscles. And then we can work from here. So let's answer the question. The backflow of blood will mean that less blood will be pumped to the lungs to become oxygenated. There will be less oxygenated blood to pump around the body and to the exercising muscles. Less aerobic respiration can take place, which means less energy will be released. Make sure you don't say less energy will be produced. Energy can't be produced and you will lose marks for that. So anyway, if they have less energy, the muscles can't contract as well. Anaerobic respiration will take place and lactic acid will be produced causing muscle fatigue and oxygen debt. You don't need to write all of this for four marks. There are about nine points here, but to get three or four marks, you must refer to both respiration and the effects on exercise. A patient with a leaking heart valve may have the valve replaced. A study compared two different types of replacement heart valve, a mechanical valve and biological valves from pigs. The data used in the study was collected from female patients aged 50 to 69 and table four shows the data. Give one conclusion about the death of patients from heart-related problems after a valve replacement. Include calculations to support your answer. For the mechanical valves, we can see that 180 out of 2,852 patients in total died. So that is 6% of those patients. For the biological valves, 178 patients died out of 1,754 in total. So this means 10% deaths. So there is a higher percentage of patients who die with a biological valve. And it's really important to make those calculations because at a glance, when you look in the table, you might think more people die with the mechanical valve. Actually, when you look at the percentages, it's not true. One risk of mechanical valves is that blood clots can form on the surface of the valve. Name the component of the blood that starts the process of blood clotting. Well, that is platelets. Evaluate the use of mechanical replacement heart valves and biological replacement heart valves. Use the information from table four and your own knowledge. When you see the word evaluate, you need to write about the good bits and the bad bits, the pros and the cons, the advantages and the disadvantages. In this question, the examiner is looking for comparisons between both valves and some of your own knowledge. When you answer this question, you need to have the table in front of you to refer to. I am going to write in blue the information I get from the table and in black for 
what we should have as our own knowledge. Mechanical valves last longer as fewer patients need replacing within six years, but blood clots on the brain are more likely after surgery. So that is from the table. Then we need to put our own knowledge into it. So the patient has to take anti-clotting medication for the rest of their lives to prevent the blood clotting on the brain or in the coronary arteries of the heart. The problem with anti-clotting medication is that the individual may suffer excessive bleeding if they were to become injured because obviously they can't clot their blood. Then look at the table again, the survival rate at five years is slightly higher for a mechanical valve and there are a lower percentage of deaths due to heart related problems. For biological valves, there is a very small risk of blood clotting on the brain. So that will mean anti-clotting medication won't be needed. The biological valves are from pigs. So there are ethical issues around using animal tissue and the valve may harden. Patients are more likely to need a replacement valve within six years. Because the valve is made from animal tissue, the patient is more likely to reject the valve and that means their white blood cells try to destroy this pig tissue. Therefore, the patient will need to take immunosuppressant medication and that helps to slow down the immune response and that's a problem because they may get sick from more common illnesses. I hope you found that useful. Have a break and then give part three a go. And don't forget to like and subscribe for new content.